BookTube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my rather late February wrap up. It's a bit late because um, I tried to film it a couple of weeks ago but my phone was playing up, I filmed on my phone um, and it wouldn't let me uh, record anything past a couple of minutes. Um, I have recorded a video since which isn't up yet, you'll be seeing it after this one. Um, <clears throat> but I just I couldn't be bothered to play and try and sort it out um, and yeah so I gave up and I put the phone away and I put it away and yeah yeah um, so I didn't film it so it, like I say this is rather late um, to start with let's get into the stats so I'm finished four books in this month uh, I, I had um, one physical book two ebooks and one audiobook. I read a total of 1,413 pages and I listened to 11 hours and 46 minutes of audio. I didn't have any books that I, I decided that I didn't want to finish. They were a mixture of romance, historical fiction and um, romance <laughs> uh, and my average rating was 3.69. In terms of number of books that were on my TBR to start with, um, two of those were on my TBR to start with um, from the beginning of the year. Um, so that would have been another two towards the 15 before I could start buying books. However, I have a confession to make. I bought books. I bought five books um, in this month. Uh, three of them are series continuations so they wouldn't have counted. One of them is a cookery book so I wasn't going to count that either but then when I was in Waterstones um, looking for Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie which is one of the series continuations I picked up uh, I spotted this book and I'd heard good things about it online um, and that is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This is fantasy romance and it's based around the villains getting their happy ever after. So this is based around Captain Hook from Peter Pan. Um, I've only heard good things about this series and I wanted to read it and to see it in print in the bookshop. I've been having such a good time with the Plated Prisoner series um, that seeing that this was another one that had been picked up to be published through shops, uh, sold through shops, I had to pick it up because that just says everything you need to know um, about a book is that if a bookseller, especially a national bookseller, is going to pick it up, it has to be good. So I broke my book buying ban um, and I'm having to start from scratch. So yes, uh, from March I, I am back to zero and we'll have to start counting to 15 again. I have decided 15 is a reasonable number, so I'm going to stick with that, um, and we'll see how we go. In terms of series reading, um, like I say, I only read four books, so only two of the books counted uh, for series um, that I'm reading. One of those was a series starter, and the second one was a continuation of a series. And that's it. So let's talk about the books that I read as well. The first book that I finished is Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. This is book two in her Dreamland Billionaire series. Uh, Dreamland is a fictional version of Disney um, and it's based around the three sons of the grandfather who set up Dreamland um, and how he has set them tasks to Baby, be able to claim their inheritance. Basically, those tasks uh, end up with the brothers falling in love with their happy ever afters. And like I say, this is book two. So this is the eldest brother, Declan, um, and it's a fake marriage uh, trope. Um, he uh, has been tasked to get married and have a baby within a certain length of time by his grandfather. And his assistant Iris has been trying to get this all sorted out for him. And he f keeps frightening off the potential matches uh, to the point where they are all set up and ready to announce the engagement and have the wedding. And um, Iris has to step in and she has to take the place of his 
potential bride to be and they have to pretend that they have been in love for all these years and that this process has just brought it home and they've been dating and yeah um and she has to move in with him and there initially they start out with you know there's going to be nothing physical between them in the way of their relationship but uh obviously that um that goes by the wayside and you see them falling in love uh he she obviously she she's planned the wedding so they have the wedding that's been planned they go on the honeymoon um and the honeymoon was a dream honeymoon uh it was a safari and it, i mean that's had i ever got married that was going to be one of my dream honeymoons so reading that and seeing the two of them falling in love and the way declan cared for iris um i really really enjoyed this book uh, Declan had to learn to put away work and he had to learn to be Declan the man as well as Declan the CEO uh, and Iris was a really great foil for that she she really because she knew where he wasn't drawing the lines because she was his daily assistant uh, she could really put that in place and um, encourage him to to leave work behind and I think that really helped with their building their relationship as well because while she could push and cajole and and you know he she could also say well come on you need to do this because we need to we need to put this side of our relationship out there uh so i think that was a really really good thing overall absolutely enjoyed it uh and yeah definitely definitely going to finish the series out because i'm looking forward to the uh, youngest brothers book um especially because uh that is a second chance romance and really looking forward to it my second finish of the month is Once Upon a River by Diane Satterfield. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you may remember that this was on the TBR for September last year because it was the September Cozy Book Club pick for that month. And I didn't finish it. I got about halfway through it and I was really, really intrigued by it and I wanted to keep reading, but it was just one of those books that when I put it down, I didn't really want to come back to it. Uh, I had a day before Christmas um, where I was off work. I had no electricity and the only thing I could do was read a book. And I picked it up and I read quite a few pages um, over a session during that day. And I, I got back into it a little bit, but I did put it down again and I need a little bit of motivation to pick it up. And I just thought, you know what? I need to get it done. I need to get it over with. My motivation to finish it is because it was a library book. Um, <laughs> and because it was so overdue because I kept forgetting to renew it um they wouldn't let me renew it any longer but they also wouldn't let me borrow any more books until I take it back um it has now been returned and I have paid my rather substantial fine um but hey ho that should teach me I probably will do it again in the future but my account is now free and clear and I can borrow more books if I want to anyway this book is set back in the late, very late 1800s and it's set in a town on the Thames um, one evening when the River Thames is swollen and flooded uh, in a pub um, alongside the Thames. A stranger turns up at the door with a girl in his arms. He promptly collapses. The girl to all uh, appearances has passed away. However, later that evening, she starts to breathe again. Then three different families try to claim that she is um, part of their family, either a daughter or a sister. And we have to go through the whole book trying to figure out where she actually came from. There is one tie that links all the whole thing together. Um, you can't quite see how the three people are tied, but they are. And you get that right at the very end. And it was actually quite a fantastic reveal because I didn't suspect it at all. Um, there's one particular person that you have no idea what, you know, what place they have. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give it away. But at, right at the end of the book, when it all comes clear um, and you have finally an idea of where this girl comes from, um yeah i'm i'm so glad i stuck with it because i did really enjoy it in the end so much so i mean the books that we read cozy book club they're not the type of books i automatically reach for um but i would like to read and i know there is at least one more book and the name escapes me by diane setterfield i'd like to give it a go uh, because i did really enjoy her writing in the end um 
So we'll definitely look at picking up uh, books from her again in the future. And yes, I would highly recommend it. Just don't don't take five months to read it. Um, read it over a few days or a week, um, but definitely don't take five months to read it. The third book that I finished for the month was the February pick for Literature Book Club, and that was A Lady of Ritzgrove Manor by Catherine Moon. This is one where the rating I've given it is deceptively high. Um, but I've given the rating based on the quality of one aspect of the book. Uh, this is um, Monster Romance. Uh, it's the beginning of a series and it's the Tempting Monsters series. And it's about a young woman who is very highly driven with her carnal appetites. And she... Um, she is chosen by this doctor uh, to have a session with him in which uh, he wants to help her with her desires. And you learn that actually this doctor is not all he seems. He's actually um, a Jekyll and Hyde type character. And there's plenty of other monsters. There's vampires, there's golems, there's invisible men. There's just all sorts of, of different um different uh there's a sphinx um yes different all different types of species uh that um this woman comes into contact with it's reverse harem so this young woman esther she has the pick of about five men i think six men i think by she's got this little harem of men um and yeah the the quality of the uh physical adventures she has is the reason for the rating of this book. Um, there is no other reason to read it. There is a very small plot, um, which was very intriguing. And I, you know, part of why I kept reading beyond the physical was because I was intrigued by the plot. Um, she goes to live in this manor, Rooksgrave Manor, uh, at the encouragement of the uh, doctor, uh, which is where she meets the other men. And this manor is attacked and specifically is trying to attack her. And yeah, it goes from there. So they're obviously trying to identify the evil. She's trying to be protected. One thing I did enjoy about the plot um, is you you may see if you've read a lot of romance or um, read about a lot of romance online, you may have come across the term too stupid to live. That is when the heroine is in danger and she goes off and she does something that puts her in direct danger um, because she hasn't listened to the people who were trying to take care of her. She hasn't thought that, oh, hang on, if I leave this place where I'm really safe, the bad guy might get me. Uh, Esther didn't have that issue. Um, there was a situation, obviously she was in danger. They moved her to a place of safety when the men were going to leaving to investigate and she was being left with um, other people for her safety, she stayed where she was. Uh, she was worried about the men. She could have gone chasing off after them, but she didn't. She stayed where she was. When she did go to the place, when the whole group had to go and they couldn't leave her behind, there was no one to leave her with, she made sure that she was with someone who could take care of her or get a message to her men um, on her behalf. So... She doesn't have that too stupid to live attitude. And I actually really like that because um, quite often that is there and it's just a way to further the plot. Um, and yes, there, she did still get in trouble, but she tried to make sure that she was as safe as she possibly could be the whole time. And I, I love that because instead of showing, oh, well, it's me, I'm going to go and get myself into a bit of trouble. She went, you know what? This is dangerous. Can you come with me and help me, please? She still got in trouble. It just shows that you can take every precaution in the world and something bad still might happen to you. But I just love the way the author did that. Um, and I am going to read the second book. I've already, the second book in the series is one of the ones that I've actually purchased in the month of February. And I will be continuing it probably in April at this point. Um, because there are plans afoot for April reading already uh, and I'm looking forward to that and yes um, I'm not going to spoil the April reading but yes definitely enjoyed it if you like romance with a lot of physical interaction and not so much plot then this is definitely a book for you and the final book that I finished in the month of February was the February book club pick for Cozy Book Club 
and that is uh tell the wolves i'm home by carol rifka brunt can't remember if it's brunt or blunt um and yeah i'm not sure what to say about this one uh it's historical fiction it's set in the 80s um when uh late 80s when the aids epidemic was really taking hold um, and becoming known about and we were finding out lots about it um one of the good things about this book that i found was i really felt that for me the author captured that part of history i'm i was born in the very very late 70s uh and i have very vague recollections of the attitudes towards hiv and aids from that time um especially because as I was a t became a teen in the 90s, that is when we were trying to promote the safer side um, so that, you know, this didn't spread um, and also uh, promote the actually, you know, just because someone has this disease doesn't mean they're dangerous. You know, you can share a toilet. Um, you're not going to... That's, yeah, so... And there was all of that. Um, and I really... Uh, that really came off the page to me and I, I remember all of that so that I was actually I quite liked that part that side of it the problem with the book for me and this coloured the whole thing uh, was it is about a young woman she's 14 years old um, and six years before her uncle on her mum's side has come back into her life he's her godfather and she has started a relationship with him. And now at the age of 14, she's starting to think beyond boys being boys. She's starting to think of them as boyfriends. Um, and there is one scene in this book where she's thinking about her uncle and she is talking about him in, in an emotional and physical sense. Um, of having feelings which are completely inappropriate for a fa for family members to have for each other and it just it coloured the whole book for me because that did not sit well that a 14 year old would be thinking like that of their maternal uncle um, um, and yeah that made it very difficult for me that coloured the whole book for me was just that one because it just made me uncomfortable um, and there were allusions to her feeling that way uh through the rest of the book and i think if that hadn't been there if it had just been she hero worshipped her uncle because he understood her um if she just hero worshipped him from that point of view that he was her uncle i probably would have been okay with the rest of it um because the rest of it was her discovering more about feelings um for others and I yeah I just don't know what else to say it wasn't a book for me I very unlikely will read anything by this author again um the writing was good it wasn't bad writing I just I'm not sure that if that's elements she's going to put in a book that's not really something I'd have to I'd have to really look into her books I think to see make sure that that isn't something I'm going to have to deal with in future um yeah so that one I still haven't wholly set I've given it a rating on Storygraph but I'm not wholly set on the rating um I think I gave the rating for the writing rather than for the story um and yeah that was my final finish of the month it wasn't my final book of the month um I was in the process of reading another book but I finished more than half of that book right at the beginning of March so I'm not going to talk about this one here it will come in my March wrap up and um, yeah that was all the books i read in february if uh you haven't already talked about it elsewhere what did you read in february let me know in the comments box down below have you read any of these books before uh if you have what were your thoughts on them i'd love to hear from you in the comments um if you have enjoyed this video then please don't forget it forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're not and you've enjoyed it then please subscribe to my channel so you get more content in future and I will look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye!